I think it is a very smart thing to do. And in some ways, to me, it's, it's actually personal because I grew up in a military family, and uh, it would have been impossible for my mother to have a career uh, as we moved every year and a half to three years. And so uh, just from that vantage point, I, I think that this is important. And that's one of the things that, that we are looking at in Kansas is ways to essentially emulate what you have done uh, in Arizona. We've taken sort of baby steps uh, at this point. We have entered into a nurse licensing compact uh, with other states so that at least uh, folks in the, the nursing field uh, can, can move to Kansas and continue to practice. Uh, that is particularly important uh, on our military installations. Uh, we have also, you know, and, and here we're looking more at uh, the reentry issues. Uh, and we are, we've worked with our licensing boards uh, to prevent them from considering any offenses that occurred uh, five years before the application uh, goes in. And we've also had them uh, remove phrasing like moral turpitude and good character because that allows way too much uh, subjectivity to occur when uh, those uh, license applications are being uh, considered. Another way we're approaching this, though, is uh, our Department of Revenue is actually taking mobile units down to our corrections facilities and uh, working to get some of those folks uh, their commercial driver's licenses so that when they are released from, from prison, uh, they'll be certified uh, to do that. We have a tremendous shortage uh, in uh, CDLs. We, we got a lot of highways uh, and a lot of distribution centers uh, in Kansas, and that's a real high need. So we are we are looking at that, uh, and then we are continuing to look just across the board. I mean, if I'm not sure. You, you say it's bipartisan. I'm not sure though that I could get something, uh, you know, as sweeping as your uh, bill through the legislature. But we're going to continue to just chip away at this because uh, we, like every other state. Uh, really have severe workforce shortages in just about every area. Uh, I will say that, you know, I think, uh, Kim, it was you who talked about the welding uh, yeah. in, the, in the prisons. You know, we do have a number of, of programs now that uh, at where our inmates actually go to the workplace uh, and are uh, participating. A lot of it is welding. Some of it's uh, other kind of manufacturing. Uh, and what we're, we're getting those folks uh, into apprenticeships, getting them licensed and trained, uh, and then uh, actually we're finding that they they're staying and being employed. Uh, and we are we're working very hard to expand that kind of programming uh, within our correction system. Uh, we our new secretary of corrections who we stole from Idaho uh, is working very closely with our community tech colleges. Uh, and, and with um, our employers in the area. Uh, so we expect that to expand. And, you know, I, I believe uh, Governor Leon Guerrero, it was you who talked about, you know, getting businesses to work in this. We've approached a number of the businesses on this issue of uh, reentry, and they've been very open. Um, they're so short of workers right now. They're, you know, I think if the unemployment situation were different, we might not get that kind of response, but they're very, very engaged with this. In fact, we are working uh, together with Coke Industries um, to who has a, they have a real serious um, interest in criminal justice reform overall, uh, but specifically in this kind of thing because the the getting people licensed, getting them certified, uh, really will prevent uh, a, a lot of recidivism.